I have a specific system for building a second brain for learning a language in Obsidian. If you don't know what Obsidian is, don't worry because this video is beginner friendly and you don't need any prerequisites. I will talk about how to install Obsidian, create three pages for my own system, how to add words and customize their appearance, and also how to convert them into flashcards. After that, Obsidian will do the rest and it will show you those flashcards with proper time intervals based on the way you rate each word while reviewing it and we will cover a lot more as well so first of all i should search for obsidian download and i should open this link and as you can see this is the official website of obsidian and as you can see it automatically recognized that i'm using windows and it shows download for windows so i click on this and i should wait for the download process so as you can see it has been downloaded so this is the file which i have downloaded so i right click on it and click on run as administrator so now in this step we want to create a new vault which is basically creating a new project so i click on this so in this step this is the vault name which is basically the project name and this is the project location which is very important and you need it later you need the project location later so for example let's choose youtube for the project name and for example suppose that i want to for example install obsidian here i mean the project location is going to be here so let's copy this path and let's open this so here i click on this browse and i should navigate to this path and i select this folder so as you can see this is going to be the project folder so i click on this create button so as you can see in this path it has created a folder called youtube which is basically our projects folder because we named our project youtube earlier so let's maximize obsidian and for demonstration purposes let's create three pages or let's say three notes so in order to do so you should click on this and let's name it for example. let's name the first page storehouse and let's click here and also let's create two other pages with other names and these are specific names for these pages come from this video so we want to work with vocabs queue and we don't need other tabs so let's close other tabs so now let's suppose that i want to add a word with all of its definitions examples and these kinds of things so let's suppose that i want to paste something like this or actually add something like this this is basically as you can see this is a word and by using this question mark we are saying that everything before this question mark is one side of the flashcard and everything after this question mark is the other side of the flashcard so as you can see this is a word this is the pronunciation this is example number one this is example number two this is the persian meaning of this word because my native language is persian and this is the english definition and this is the source of this example i mean this is the context which i learned this word and now suppose that this is the link to that tweet so i copy this link and let's double click on this link in order to select this and i press ctrl k on my keyboard in order to convert this to a link and i paste the url and i click somewhere else as you can see we have added a link as well and now let's suppose that we want to add another word so in order to do so we can do something like this we can type something else like this but as you can see in this second word i didn't include the persian translation it doesn't really matter what things you want to have in your flashcards and one of the most important things is this that when you are adding the informations of a word you shouldn't have empty lines among these lines for example if i press enter this is going to cause a problem and that problem is that these two lines are not going to be included as the information of this flashcard of this word so you shouldn't have empty lines among these lines so this is word number one and this is word number two and you can add other words as well but for demonstration purposes i have added two words but here there is something wrong which if you don't fix it you are going to encounter with a lot of problems and that thing is for example this line is in persian and as you know persian is a right to left language and many other languages are also right to left languages so we need to fix this problem so in order to do so we should install a plugin so first of all make sure that you have internet connection and then you should go to settings and go to community plugins 
So if you read this, it says that there might be some potential security issues with some plugins. But in my opinion, if you install the well-known and famous plugins, that would be not very serious. But it's your choice. If you don't want to turn on community plugins, then that's your choice. But I want to turn on community plugins. So I click on it and then I click on browse in order to browse community plugins. And here I search for RTL, I mean right to left. And you can see that we have some plugins. We want to install two plugins. Number one is dynamic RTL. So I click on it and I click on install. So as you can, as you can see, it is installing the plugin. So you can see it has successfully installed the plugin and now we want to enable it. So that's it. But also let's install the other plugin as well. We want to install this plugin as well, RTL support. So let's, so let's click on it. And let's install this as well. And also let's enable it. So let's close this. And also let's close this. So as you can see now, the problem has been fixed. So we can keep it as it is, but I don't want that because in my opinion, that's so boring. And I want to convert it to something like this. I want to have some colors for these texts. So in order to do so, we need to install another plugin. So once again, I go to settings and community plugins and browse. And here I simply search for colored. And here I click on this colored text and I should install this plugin. And now let's enable it. So let's close this and also let's close this again. And as you can see, we have five boxes which can be used for colors. But if you don't see these boxes, so you should restart the Obsidian. By saying restart, I mean you should close the Obsidian and open it again. So as you can see, these boxes are empty. So let's fill them. So in order to do so, I click on the first one and I click on this. And I should specify some numbers in order to customize the color. I want to choose these numbers. So this is color one. I click here and I click on this. And let's add another color as well. So first of all, we should click on this box in order to select this box. And after selecting it, you should once again click on it in order to open this window. Then I should click on this and I should specify some numbers. So I click here and I click on this. And in a similar way, I try to add other colors as well. So now that we have our boxes filled with some colors, I want to define a shortcut in order to apply these colors to the text. So in order to do so, I go to settings and I go to hotkeys and here I search for colored text. And I want to define shortcuts for these two, I mean color text and removing the color. So first of all, let's click on this and I press, for example, control shift H for this one and I click on this and I press control shift X for this one. And let's close this page. So now let's change the color of the word itself. So in order to do so, first of all, you should click on one of these colors. So let's click on this one in order to enable this color. And for example, let's select this and press control shift H in order to colorize this text. And also let's double click on this and press control shift H in order to colorize this as well. And now let's colorize the words in the examples. So I click on this one in order to enable this box and let's colorize these ones. So I press control shift H and let's choose this color for the meaning. So I click on this and I press control shift H and also this and also this Persian translation. And remember to put empty lines between these different words in order to help Obsidian to distinguish that these are different words. And also, if you want, you can have horizontal lines as well. For example, let's press enter. And here, for example, I want to type three dashes and I press enter. And as you can see, this is a horizontal line. But remember to put one empty line before this line and one empty line after this line. So now in order to have flashcards based on these words, we should install another plugin in Obsidian. So I go to settings and community plugins. And here I click on browse. And here I should search for a spaced repetition. 
So as you can see, this is the plugin. So I click on it. And I want to install this plugin. And after that, I should enable it. And now let's close this and close this. So now we should add a tag in this page in order to help that plugin to understand that there are some words inside this page. So let's add a tag at the bottom of the page, but it doesn't need to be necessarily at the bottom of the page. It can be anywhere inside this page, but I like to have it at the bottom of the page. So let's add a tag. For example, let's call it vocabs Q. That's it. And let's copy all of this tag because we need it. So let's copy, let's press control C to copy this tag. And now let's go to settings. And here, if I scroll down, you can see in the community plugins section, we have something called a spaced repetition. So I click on it. And as you can see, we can add that tag here. So let's click on this and let's press a space. Do not press for example, comma on these types of things, you should press space on your keyboard. You should press on the space key on your keyboard. And after putting a space, you should paste the tag which you have copied, which is in this case, it is vocabs Q. That's it. So let's close this window. And now if I click on this, you can see we have vocabs Q. So I click on it. So as you can see, this is the first side of the flashcard. And if I press enter, you can see it shows the other side of the flashcard and you can specify whether it was easy, hard or good. So let's suppose that it was easy. And for this one, let's press enter. And let's suppose that this one was hard. So that's it. You can see that we don't have anything. So if I click on it again, you can see the these words because there isn't any flashcard for today to review because we have done all of them. So let's close this. And as you can see, the plugin has added some metadata below each word. And these metadata help the algorithm to distinguish which words it should show you each day. But now let's suppose that for some purposes, which I talked about in this video, which you can see on the screen now, I want to move, for example, this word to another page, for example, called vocabs main. So in, in order to do so, I should select all of the data related to this word and I press control X. I mean, I want to cut all of them and I go to vocabs main and I paste them. But pasting this was not enough. So we should add another tag for this page as well. So again, once again, I want to add another tag at the bottom of this page. So let's call it vocabs main. And let's copy this tag. And let's go to settings. And again, in the community plugins, you should click on space repetition. And in this page, you should add this one as well. So I press space on my keyboard and I paste the tag, which I copied. Then I close this window. And once again, if I click on this, you can see now we have two things, vocabs main and vocabs Q. So let's close this. And now let's suppose that I want to cram all this stuff in the vocabs Q page. So I talked about what is cram and what is the purpose of cram in this video, which you can see on the screen now, but I want to suppose that I want to cram all the stuff, which is in this page. I mean, vocabs Q, but before that, as you can see, we have only one word in this page, but for demonstration purposes, let's add some other words as well. So let's paste some of this stuff from my own project. So let's paste it here. So as you can see, I have added some other words. That's it. And now in order to cram all this stuff in this page, I should press control P on my keyboard in order to open this command window. And here I should search for cram. And as you can see, it says cram flashcards and this note. So I click on it. And as you can see in this note, the only flashcard that we have is vocabs queue. So I click on it. So as you can see, it says that there are four words inside this page. And once again, you should, we can press enter or click on this show answer in order to show the answer, or let's say the other side of the flashcard. But I don't suggest using these buttons for the purpose I talked about in that video about cramming. You don't need to use these buttons. So all you need to do is skip to the other word. And for example, this is a word and you can see the answer. You can see the other side of the flashcard by pressing enter on your keyboard and it should, and you can go to the next word and etc. So that's it. So let's close this. 
But as I have told you, if you want to make your second brain bigger and improve it every day so that you can master that language as fast as possible, you need to make this process a habit. And I have made a habit building system, which is my own customization, and hence you haven't seen that before in any books or YouTube videos. If you want to learn more about it, you can watch this video, which is on the screen now.